learning about prisms and cylinders. Prisms have rectangular sides and they have two parallel bases. And you can see in these examples, we have a triangular prism and a square prism. You can tell this is a triangular prism because the all the sides are rectangles except for up here we have a base and down here we have a base that are triangles. When you're looking at a prism, you're going to be multiplying the area of one of the bases times the height of the entire figure. So the formula is capital B times H, where capital B stands for base area or the area of your base, the area of one base. And the height stands for the height of the smaller 3D figure. Now we're going to have several, we're going to have two different heights that we work with. We're going to have the height of the base, and we're going to have the height of the 3D figure. And the way you can distinguish them is the height of your base is one dimensional. It's the length between your bases of your 2D figure, and the height of your 3D figure is going to be a line that connects the two bases together. It's a perpendicular distance between the two bases. Actually, height, regardless of 2D or 3D, is always a perpendicular distance between the two bases. So let's look at some examples. If we're talking about a rectangular prism, again, volume is always the area of the base times height. So B, capital B, means area of base. That's very important. And H always means the perpendicular distance between spaces. So if we're talking about a rectangular prism, if you look at your diagram over here, we're talking about a prism where all sides are rectangles, and you can take any two sides that are parallel to each other to be the base. It really doesn't matter which two is a rectangular prism. But a rectangle will be your base, and so if you substitute in the place of capital B the formula for a rectangle, base times height or length times width. And then you multiply that times the entire height of the whole figure, which you'll see up in the figure. If you have a triangular prism, you'll notice in the figure we have the height and the base in green of your triangle, and then we have the height of the entire prism in red. And your figure is going to have the formula capital B times H as usual, but instead of capital B, you're going to substitute in one half base times height because that is the formula for the area of a triangle or the area of the base in this particular case. And then you multiply that times the height of the figure. Notice that the height of your figure is that line that connects the two triangles together, the perpendicular distance between the two triangles. And notice that all the other sides besides the triangles are rectangles. In the next figure, we have a triangular prism. In a triangular prism, you're going to replace that capital B, which means area base, with the area formula for a trapezoid, one half the sum of the bases times the height. You're going to put that in the place of your capital B, and then you're going to multiply that area times the height of the figure, which again, notice up at the drawing, the height of the figure is that distance between your two trapezoids. It's a perpendicular distance between the two bases. Notice in the picture of the trapezoid, we have a height of our trapezoid as well. The height of the trapezoid is a perpendicular distance between the two bases of your trapezoid. That's different than the height of your 3D figure, which is going to be the, the uh, distance between your two trapezoids. Now, if we look at some examples, on the next page, we have um, a rectangular prism for one, a square prism for two, and a trapezoidal prism for three. So for number one, we're going to find the volume using area base times height. We're going to substitute the place of B, either length times width or base times height, whichever you prefer. And we can use five and four as our base and height of the rectangle that's at the bottom. And then the height of the whole prism would be 6. Again, it doesn't really matter which is which. And that's why you learn length times width times height as your volume formula when you were in elementary school. You can still use that. So 5 times 4 times the height of the whole thing is going to be 6. It's going to be 120. And our next prism is the square prism. Which I 
then we're going to use area of base times height. In the place of capital B, we're going to replace capital B with the area formula of our base, which is the square. So we're going to put B times H, that's our formula for a square, times the height of the whole thing. So for our for this one, 3 and 3 are the length of our base. So 3 times 3 is the base and height of our square. The height of the whole thing, the whole 3D figure, is 10. The perpendicular distance between the two squares. So we get 90 as our volume. And volume, the units will always be cubed because we're working with a 3D figure. For the next one, again, we have volume equals area base times height. Now, in this case, they tell you the area of the base is 45. So we don't even have to worry about what formula would go there. So if they tell you that the area of the base is some number, you don't have to worry about putting a formula in the place of capital B. Now, in this case, we would have used the formula one half times the sum of the bases times height, which is the fraction. And our volume is 45. One thing I want you to keep in mind is that volume is how much goes inside of something. So when we're talking about volume, how much water, how much paint, how much would go inside of your figure. So let's look at an example. Here we have a trapezoidal prism. We want to know how much will go inside of this figure. So we're going to use that same formula, volume equals area to base times height. And in the place of B, we're going to put our trapezoidal, our trapezoid formula, one half of some of the bases times the height. And then we're going to multiply all that times the height of the entire 3D figure. In this case, they're giving us the volume. So they tell us the volume is 12 meters cubed. And they, on the picture, show us that the bases are 2.4 meters. It doesn't matter which one's base one, which one's base two, and 1.6 meters. And then the height of the trapezoid is 1.2, but we don't know the height of the entire 3D figure. That's what we're solving for. So we're going to put in one the multiplication straight into our calculator. When we multiply, we get 2.4. Make sure you use your calculator correctly. Now we're going to divide both sides by 2.4 to solve for the height of the whole entire figure. And our height equals 5 meters. Cylinders are just like prisms, except that the bases are circles instead of polygons. So what we're going to do is substitute by our squared in the place of capital B. So we're still working with the formula B equals capital B times H, only B is going to equal by our squared because our base is in circle. So we're going to multiply by our squared times the height of the whole thing. So in number four, we have an example where they give us the base once again. So volume equals the area of the base times the height. They tell us that pi r squared equals 20. So we're just going to multiply 20 times 3, and the volume equals 60. In the next example, we know the radius is 4. So again, volume equals the area of the base times the height. So the volume equals pi r squared. That's how you're going to find the area of the base times the height of the whole thing. So the volume is going to equal 3.14 in the place of pi. 4 is our radius in the place of r. And our height of the whole thing is 10. And when we plug that in, we are going to get volume equals 502.4. And we can units cubed if we had a unit. For the next problem, volume equals area of the base times the height. So again, it's pi r squared times the height. So we're going to put in 3.14, our radius is 5, and our height is 4. And when we put that straight into our calculator, we're going to get 314. We're going to leave these in terms of pi using the formula volume equals area of base times height. And we know that base area is pi r squared. Keep that in mind. So in the number 13 here, they tell us that the base radius is 2. So we know that the area, or base area, is going to be pi times 2 squared. So we know that the base area is going to be 4 pi. So we can go ahead and put that in the place of base area. The height, we have to solve. So we're going to say uh, volume is 12 pi. That's what they gave us. And then the base area is 4 pi. We just figured that out. And then the height is what we're looking for. We're going to divide both sides by 4 pi to get h by itself. These cancel, the pi's cancel, so h equals.